Our next movie is Barb Wire, starring Pamela Anderson Lee from Baywatch, another big screen starring debut here in a major role as the owner of a bar in the last free city in America after congressional right-wingers have staged a second civil war in the year 2017. She's a freelance mercenary and bounty hunter who, among various guises, poses as a hooker to get inside information and to get her man. But most of her time is spent in the bar she runs, where in this scene, visiting congressionals or government stormtroopers make some threats. Now tell me what movie this reminds you of. Rumor has it that you used to fight with the resistance. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. I'm neutral. I'm a businesswoman, Colonel. Perhaps we can do business. I can assure you, Barb has a very keen sense of commerce. If you answered that the scene reminded you of Casablanca, you answered correctly. In fact, the last two-thirds of Barbed Wire was inspired so closely by Casablanca that you can have fun identifying the scenes and the characters. Here, for example, is a scene where Barb runs into an old lover named Axel only to discover that he is now married to a courageous freedom fighter. When I learned that Topeka, Kansas was a lab experiment and that the Congressionals planned to unleash Red Ribbon on the entire free territories, I defected to the resistance. It was Axel that helped me get out of Washington. Initially, we married on paper purely for identification purposes. We've been on the run ever since. How utterly damn heroic. Barbed wire has possession of priceless contact lenses that can alter a person's identity, allowing them free passage to Canada. And, of course, she gives them to the heroic resistance fighters and helps them get to the airport. So the pallbearer rips off the graduate and barbed wire rips off Casablanca. And I didn't mind that barbed wire recycled so much of its plot from Casablanca because bad movies are remade so often these days that it's refreshing to see them remaking a good one for a change, ripping off a classic. But the movie never delivers on the underlying human tensions in Casablanca and is more concerned with special effects and violence and how many different ways Pam Anderson's Brazier can be photographed. Barbed Wire is not a good movie, but it's not a boring one. And in the annals of trash classics, I think it's eventually going to rank pretty high. Not, not with me. Um, I just, uh, I'm amazed uh, with the Casablanca comparison. I'm just thinking about what Ingrid Bergman would look like in uh, Fredericks of Hollywood clothing, because that's really the attraction here, I suppose, is seeing Pamela Anderson, see if, whether her breasts are going to top a lot of her uh, cat lady outfit or whatever she's wearing. <laughs> I mean, there isn't a whole lot more than that here, Roger. Um, I, I, I There's just, a high energy level. They work very hard in this movie. They have a lot, they have of, a lot of stunts, they, Roger. Well, yes, they do. <laughs> I said they and have a lot a of lot. stunts. I found none of them entertaining, mm -hmm. not a single one. What about the atmosphere? What about the uh, Sidney Greenstreet character who runs a junkyard and sits around in the I scoop room? I didn't find him interesting. I think that, that no, I, I'm telling As you. As a movie fan, though, didn't you even get off on any of the cross-references and so forth? I, I, I understand what you're talking about, but uh, I was basically had... Her being thrust yeah, well, in my I'm, face. You know, I demand two things of a movie. This one only gave me one. It's not a good movie, okay, but it didn't bore me. So that's right. it did bore me. 